Hello, welcome to Truck Stop Murder and True Crime Podcast slash Monday Murder Meal. I'm going to try to start doing this every Monday. I had one episode. Hopefully, whoever listened to it enjoyed it. But I'm going to start doing this every Monday and start doing my regular episodes because I do have regular episodes that I do have lined up. But I'm going to start doing them as my resets happen. A reset is within eight hours, eight days, you can only drive 70 hours. So during my reset, that gives me more time to do a full episode. But while I'm constantly, so I put more contact out, which I want to get more out there. I'm going to start doing these Monday, which I'm fascinated about too, actually. I'm going to start doing these Monday murder meals. So what I'm going to start, I have my last episode is three from Texas. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start doing stuff, execution since execution started back in 1976. I'm going to start from 76 and come to 2014 and then on from there. And there's a lot to do. So let's get some statistics about this. Since the death death penalty was reinstated in 1976, 1,389 convicted murders have been executed in the United States as of October 1st, 2014. So from September, well, actually 1976 to October 1st, 2014. Okay. Of these executions, 15 were female. The last was Lisa Ann Coleman in Texas, September 14, 2014. Now keep in mind, all these are from October. There's a website that I found who has all these information, but they only go to 2014. Now, once I do all these and I'll continue on from 14 on but as the stats I'm getting right now are from 2014 so executed of these are 15 were female of these executed 772 were white 470 which was 55.6 percent were white and 470 33.8 percent were black executions were held in 34 different states 517 which is 37.2% was in Texas, and 21.4% was in Indiana of ex- those executions. Now, this site I'm co- getting this, all this information from is the Indiana site, so that's why it had mentioned that. 1.1202, which is 87.3%, was executed by lethal injection, including... 748 of the last 758. So that's what they started really going to is the, the lethal injection. 158, 11.6% was executed by electric chair. The last was Robert Charles Gleason Jr. in Virginia on January 16, 2013. Florida, 40. Virginia, 31. Alabama, 24. Georgia, 23. Louisiana, 20. South Carolina, 7. Indiana 3, Nebraska 3, Kentucky 1, Arkansas 1, and Tennessee 1, all by the electric chair. 11 were executed by gas chamber, the last Walter Legrand in Arizona on March 3rd, 1999. Mississippi was 4, California 2, North Carolina 2, Arizona 2, Nevada 1. 3 was executed by hanging, the last being Billy Bailey in Delaware on January 25th, 1996. Washington was two, Delaware was. Now, if you wonder what the numbers are, just in case, I know it's obvious when I'm giving these numbers for a per state. These are the numbers that did that. Like I said, three with the, the hanging. So two, Washington, one, Delaware equals three. So three was executed by firing squad, the last being Rodney Gardner in Utah, June 18, 2010. And uh, Utah was three. And I covered two of these guys. Actually, if you remember, the two guys who got executed by fire squad right next to each other, I made fun they were probably holding hands. But that was in Utah, if you remember my Beaver Utah uh, episode. So now we got the statistics, the statistics, the, the numbers from 76 on to 2014. Let's go to our first one that I'm going to cover today. And it is from Utah, and the last one, like I said, a firing squad. So this is the one that I did not cover. Like I said on my last episode, these are just, epi- you know, short stories. I may come back to them once I start doing my regular episodes. It's been so long since I did regular episodes. I was, I'm kind of rusty on it. I've actually been trying to record all day today, 
and with my much mouth and everything going on, I failed. So I decided not to follow through with it because it was just horrible. I'm going to have to go back and rewrite it. But in, in the meantime, I'm going to start doing these murder uh, Monday murder meals. So he was the first murderer executing the U.S. in 1977. So 1977, since 1977, he was number one. Date of execution was January 17, 1977 in Utah, fire squad. So like I said, if you went back to my Beaver episode, I covered the other two. So that's all three. I'm going to come we'll go over a little short episode, but short some summary of what he did. Murderer, he, like I said, Mark, Gary Mark Gilmore was his name. Let me see. Yep. Gary Mark Gilmore was named. Date of birth was December 4th, 1940. His victims was Max David Jensen, a white male, 24. Ben Bushnell, a white male, 25. Date of murder was 7, 1976. So they executed him pretty quick. You know, so seven, not not even a year. So the date of murder was, I had a count on my hand, July, January, I think that's right, July 19, 1976. And then he was executed not long, January 17, 1977. So like in six months later, Method of murder he used was a 22 handgun. Relation of murder was he was not related to him at all. Date of sentence was October 7th, 1976. So October, November, December, January. So three months after. So this was a pretty quick trial. So let's see what he did. On Monday, July 19, 1976, Max Jensen went to work as usual as a self-service gas station in Urim, Utah. That night, Gilmore had a spat with his girlfriend and went driving with her mentally unstable younger sister, April. At around 10.30, he told April he wanted to make a phone call. He left her in the truck and walked away. Gilmore went around the corner, out of the her site, and into the Sinclair service station. He spotted a tenant and quickly saw that no one else was around. He walked up to Max Jensen and pulled out the 22 Browning automatic. He instructed Jensen to empty his pockets, which the young Mormon quickly did. Of course, you tell Mormons. And then he told Jensen to go to the bathroom and lie down on the floor with his arms under his body. Jensen got into position. He, also, he was obeying everything that Gilmore said. Then in, unexpectedly, Gilmore put the gun close to Jensen's head. This one is for me, he said, and fired. Then he placed the muzzle right against Jensen's skull and shot him once again, this time for Nicole, he said. Girlfriend Nicole Baker Barnett. Gilmore spent the night with let me see, Gilmore spent the night with April at a hotel motel. In the fall night he walked into the city center motel in Provo, not far from Brigham Young University. He confronted the tenant Ben Bushel, who lived on the premises with his wife and baby. Gilmore told Ben to give him the cash box and get down on the floor. Then he Shot Bushnell in the head. Bushnell in the head. Bushnell's wife came in, so Gilma grabbed the cash box and left, trying to dispose of the gun in nearby bush. Gilma shot himself in the head. By Wednesday, Gilmore's cousin Brenda Nicole turned him into. Wait, Gilmore shot himself in the hand. I said head hand. By Wednesday, Gilmore's cousin Brenda Nicole turned in turned him into the police. Gilmore gave up. Near a road, gave up near a roadblock without a fight. At first, he denied the murders, but later admitted both. He, so he confessed to the murders. In October, Gilmore was tried, convicted, and sentenced to death. He chose death by firing squad and waived all appeals. Despite the efforts of other groups to stop it, six months after the murders, the execution was carried out. Gary Gilmore was the first person executed in the U.S. in almost 10 years in prison most of his life and paroled only four months before the murders. Gilmore w becomes a celebrity with his effort to hasten his execution. So he, he became a celebrity for that for some reason. Well, let's see what his final meal was, what this show's all about. His final meal was special meal, was steak, potatoes, milk, and coffee. And his final words was, let's do it. So, yep. 
and there he and fires were shot and he was pronounced dead on January 17th 1977 so there was the first person executed now the second person executed in the United States since 1976 was John Arthur Spanklink S-P-E-N K-E-L-I-N-K I'm just going to call him John from now on but John, since 1960, he was the second date of execution was 5-25-1979. And this brings us to Florida. And the method of execution was the electric chair. His date of birth was January, March 29, 1949. Victims was Joseph J. Simowaskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewiskewi
He was the fourth person convicted since 1976. Date of execution was March 9, 1981 in Indiana. Method was electric chair. And his date of birth was May 24, 1956. And he had quite a few victims. Terry Cheston was a white female, 21. Misty Zollers, white female, 5. Stephen Chestner, white male, 4. And Mark Chestnut, white male, 2. The date of murder was April 28, 1979. Method of murder was strangulation with cloth, drowning, drowning, drowning. So the three kids was drowning. Terry was strangled. Relation, there was no relation. So the date of, sen of sentence was February 25th, 1980. So let's get a little summary about this man. Hunters discovered Terry, Hunters discovered Terry Chris's body in White Lake Creek near State Road 67 in Morrisville in Morgan's County. A police search of the creek led to the discovery of the bodies of three small children aged 2, 4, and 5. Terry Cheston was found naked with her hands and feet bound with strips of material torn from her clothing and her head covered with slacks. She had been gagged and strangled with other strips of cloth. The evidence established that Terry Cheston had been raped and that she died of strangulation. While the children died of exphibia due, exfi exfi um, why can I speak? Exfi she, due to drown, they drowned them. At trial, Judy presented a uh, insanity defense and testified at length concerning the commission of rape and murders. Judy stated that he was driving on Interstate 495 in Merriam County when he passed Terry Cheston's car. He testified that he motioned to her to pull over to the shoulder of the road, indicating that something was wrong with the rear of her car. So pull over. The two vehicles pulled to the shoulder, stopped, and Judy perpetrated purported to assess assist the victim he said he just tried to assist them probably was nothing wrong with the car in the process he removed the coil wire therefore rendering terry chesney's cars inoperable when her car would not start judy offered her and the children a ride and she accepted judy then drove the victims to the location of the killings and pulled his truck off the road he testified he directed them on foot towards the creek that he sent the children down the path ahead of Terry and him. Judy testified that he then raped Terry, chestnut Terry, and bound her hands and feet and gagged her. When Terry cried out, the children ran back up to the path to them. Judy stated that the children stood around him and yelled at the point that he strangled Terry, chestnut and threw her body into the creek. Judy testified that he then threw each child each of the children as far as he could into the water. He stated that he remembered seeing one of the children standing in the creek. Judy returned to his truck and after attempting to evacuate, evacuate his feet, footprints, get rid of them, he then drove away from the scene. Judy's version of the events very substantially coordinated the evidence presented, so he was different in the evidence of this by the state. At the death phase of the trial, Judy ordered his attorneys not to be present. Judy ordered his attorneys not to present any evidence of mitigating circumstances. Judy stated at jury in open court at the sentence hearing that he would advise them to give him the death penalty, the death sentence, because he had no doubt that he would kill again if he had opportunity. And some of the people he might kill in the future might be members of the jury. So he told them, I will kill you. <laughs> he also directed a similar comment to the trial judge. Insanity defense is what I see in this. But anyhow, he was found guilty. And his last meal was prime rib, lobster, baked potato, salad, dinner roll. His quest for beer for his last meal was, of course, denied. Last, in his final statement was, I don't hold no grudges, grudges. This is my doing. I'm sorry it happened. And there you go. There goes, like I said, the fourth victim. The third victim on this list uh, didn't have no, what well, a second victim didn't have no last meal either. Uh, but I'm just going to start mainly focusing on the last meal. So let's do one more. It's 
Charles Brooks Jr. executed December 7, 1982. He was the second murder executed in the U.S. in 1982. Sixth murder executed since 1976. And our first murderer in Texas since 1982. And first murder executed in Texas since 1970. So obviously. But uh, what did he do? So he was the sixth murder since it started. Date of execution was December 7th, 1982 in Texas. Lethal injection. You know, date of birth was September 1st, 1942. Victim was Greg David Gregory, white male, 26. Date of murder was December 14th, 1976. So he was on there for a while. Method of murder was a handgun. Rela no relationship. Date of sentence was December 3rd, 1977. So what did he do? On December 7th, 1982, Brooks and two friends used heroin, drank, and decided to go shoplifting. Then the car broke down. Brooks went into a nearby auto dealership and asked to test drive a car. Employee of the dealership, David Gregner, a 26 year Gr Gregory, a 26-year-old mechanic, was required, required to go with Brooks to pursue to company policy. Once inside, Brooks kidnapped Gregory and went to the hotel where he and his friends Found him and shot him to death. And that's when he was found he, guilty. There's no information about. Like I said, a lot of these I'm going to go back to. But that's what he was convicted of. The, the murder of David Gregory. Cause, but anyhow, his last meal was a T-bone steak, french fries, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce. If I'm saying that right. Biscuits, peach cobbler, and iced tea. So his last and final statement was, yes, I do. I love you. I s and name is, the uh, rest of the stuff is just different language. I'm just going to skip all that because I don't, I'm making myself look foolish. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And then the rest he goes back into and be strong. But there you go. There's my Murder Monday meal. There's a couple that didn't have no meals. I hope you enjoy that. I'm going to start going back into my regular contact pretty soon once I get back into it. Like I said, I thought I would be able to get back into it. Once, once I went home with my regular job and was home all the time, I thought I would be able to be put more contact. But I didn't have enough time. As you can tell by this episode, I'm pretty rusty. So I'm going to try to get back into it, but I'm going to try to get back into it with these Monday murder meals. And once I feel confident, then I'll get back into my regular meals, meals, regular episodes. So if you enjoy that, go write and review as always. Go to different, you know, iTunes and whatever you listen to it. And always join my Facebook group and let me know what you think about all these. And always, you can fix stupid, but you can sure numb it with a 2 by 4 I'm out of here. Uh-huh.